This is Coming to you from the heart of the Pacific, brought to you by Paulie by Design. It's respected in all times. Broadcasting from San Francisco, California, the city by the bay. It's about to go, about to go down. We shine on positive Pacific Island and road miles every Sunday. Party on a Sunday. From 10 a.m. to noon, it's time for the iconic Pika Podcast with your hosts. Listening to Naki and Carl. it on <laughs> good morning <laughs> good morning welcome to the FICA broadcast i'm naki carl is off today so instead of carl being in the studio we have christine mawia with all my usos good morning sister good morning so today we are going to talk about um, cancer. We're going to continue uh, uh, Fatsoa Manatu, who was talking about how you can support and uh, uh, your family members that have cancer. And we're going to talk about um, our journeys with cancer and then um, talk about all kinds of stuff in our week. Um, Fika, what do we have? Koviki Talk on Monday, and we're going to talk about... Um, the program that uh, Carl hosted or moderated yesterday about voting. Good morning, Britt. Um, uh, good morning, Anthony and Shannon. Good morning, Shannon. So yesterday, Carl mar- moderated an event for Pacifica Vote, which was What's Your Issue? Voting for Impact. And it was like a starstruck event, like the major, major people were on. Dr. Fui Fui Lupe, Niu Mei Tolu. I'm sorry if I messed that up. Manufoli Aingam Anwai, Ilona Rayan, Tavai Samuelu, and Karina Panaya, and then Travis Wells. So it was a good event. If you missed it yesterday, go ahead to uh, scroll back on our page. It's also um, on our YouTube page, or you can go to the FICA app. How about that? And so yesterday, oh, Somebody said check her her mic. Okay, we're good. So um, yesterday we were talking. Yes, actually yesterday was my son's 30th birthday. So we celebrated his birthday by going to dinner. And then uh, Friday he had a birthday bash with his siblings and cousins. So happy birthday to my son, Mac. And then Cree had tons and tons and tons of stuff happening this week. How was your week, sister? My week was good. Um, We had a blood drive, so that was awesome. I seen that. That (laughs) was awesome. Yes, we had uh, 50 people come out and and give blood, so that was exciting. Yeah, I seen. Well, you started off with 70, and then um, it was for the Red Cross to give blood and and help people. Yes. And so I seen all the pictures that looked amazing. And then um, you were telling me yesterday that how people were overwhelmed. Yes. They thought they were just going to give blood. And, and what were they saying about they yeah. were actually saving lives? Right, right. Right. And they just felt so proud after they did it. You yeah. know, it was, it was new to them. Um, a lot of first timers. So it was exciting for them when they finished the process to actually be done. And they saved three lives. That's awesome. Awesome. Yep. Like, so if you still want to, uh, you know, Amu did a great job, Fatasi and SCDC together um, with all my Usos, um, had a blood drive. So if you're interested, go ahead and reach out to the Red Cross. And I think Sister maybe might have another event. Not sure, not guaranteeing anything, which is saying. Um, good morning, Epi. Good morning, Maury. Good morning, Lena. So thank you for tuning in. Sean Gordon, good morning, brother. Thank you for tuning in. Go ahead and share the podcast because we have a lot of good information um, today. We're going to be talking about emergency preparedness, um, early voting. If you haven't mailed your form in, um, go ahead and do so. It's the safest way because of uh, COVID-19. You want to protect yourself and your family. Wear your mask, of course. And so that was, I think that's what we were trying to get out. Um, anything else going on this week that you were busy running around? And um, if you can speak about what's going on today, or maybe <laughs> not, maybe yeah, not. Yeah, so we, AMU also did a fundraiser, a 50 cent drive that we officially closed this past week. And we're going to, we've already started um, going out to Blessing Families. So today we'll be going to San Jose and seeing a family. And then throughout this whole week, we're going to 
um, see after this family five more families. That's awesome. So thank everyone. We thank all of you guys from the bottom of our hearts who was able to give a donation and to um, help build the pots because we're going to divide that amongst um, all the families. So we thank you all for that. Because of all of you, we will be able to be a blessing to someone who's currently battling cancer. That's awesome. I love that every month, every October, you guys. Um, what is it? Well, I don't want. I want to choose the word. Uh, not celebrate, but recognize um, Cancer Awareness Month, right. and that you guys have a fundraiser and um, bless families. I, right. uh, let me not cry, but <laughs> bless families. And we'll go into that um, a little bit later um, this week. Um, we have every Monday we have our Koviki talk, and uh, Carl and I host. Um, this uh, we talk about uh, Pacific Islanders uh, dealing with COVID nineteen and uh, all the issues around it. And this week we had um, our sixth episode with uh, Manu Malo Ala Ilima, Margarita Satini, and Joseph Saya voting in the time of cor- uh, Corona. So if you haven't seen that, please, please, please go check out our YouTube page, our Facebook page. It's posted, um, and it's a great episode. They go into a lot of details, especially about voting. So we've been. Pre- pushing voting really like Pacific Islanders we've been pushing voting because we need um, to have our faces seen our numbers counted they people they need to know we're here just like the census where we were stressing you about the census so um, that that that's basically what that was about so please every Monday at five o'clock tune into Koviki talk it's a great episode so go go to our Facebook page page that you're on scroll back down or YouTube YouTube page and our FICA app we also, this past week, um, Carl and I and uh, Valerie, I think that's the coffee pot, <laughs> we, um, we were hosts, or not hosts, we were guests uh, for Fasoa Manatu, which is a program uh, like a talk show for SEDC, who, by the way, is doing a great job there. Um, so we were um, on the show. I think Cree um, couldn't make it, so us three got on and talked about our journeys, um, what else is going on? Emergency. Well, and then we have the snacky with Naki. Round eight is happening. And so I think we're going to do that today for lunch. And so we collected um, for round eight almost $950. So nice. we're going to go eat somewhere. And then whoever our server is, we're going to tip them $950. So nice. woo woo. Thank you so much for everyone that donated your 50 cents and then some. So, you know. But it's, it's a great feeling to bless someone like right. you guys are doing. Right. You're going to bless the cancer family. And so we are going to uh, go eat and bless the server because they've been having a hard time. And also there are essential workers. They've yep. been working during um, the pandemic. So good morning, Willie Salavea. Vicky, good morning, Vicky. My mom's on. Good morning, mom. Uh, tui Tavake Nehoa Maggie Toka Ilangi, look at me. Winnie Laban Felofani. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Catalina told, oh, Catalina, good morning. So, this yesterday, I went to, um, where did I go? It was my girlfriend that I work with. Um, her daughter turned four, Brittany. And so her daughter, Taylor, turned four. And so I had that, my son's birthday, and something else. Oh, and then we went to we went to go eat, uh, mm-hmm. Cree and I. And so, um, so I couldn't make the uh, voting thing that Carl was uh, the host for. So Sil, Sister Sil, Mama Sil. Mama Sil is on. Hey, Sil. Hey, Sil. So... <laughs> Basically, are we going to go into, let me just go into um, our emergency, can we do our emergency preparedness thing? Yeah, so we have, um, we've been pushing emergency preparedness because of the smoke and fires, Mm -hmm. and the weather is kind of kooky, so I'm, I always say when the weather is like this that it's the uh, earthquake, yeah. earthquake, right, right. <laughs> earthquake weather. So everybody's, oh, don't do that, don't say that. So um, we will get through this together. So it's a, we have a bunch of emergency preparedness information. Um, so I will be posting it. Mena has the flyers up. Is um, this is the main flyer? We just want you to be uh, disaster ready. You know, like uh, when the fires were going on, you needed to pack a bag. What do you put in that bag? We're looking at your medication, important paperwork, like your birth certificates, um, you know, marriage certificates, everything that's um, legal papers that are hard to replace. 
Clothes, food, of course, if you have a pet, your um, pet medicine, pet food, mm-hmm. pet everything, paperwork, emer- emergency paperwork. So good morning. I'm st- I usually, usually Carl is here and then <laughs> I, uh, you know, I'm talking to everybody online and it's, I'm trying to do both. Um, good morning, Maggie. So we're trying to prepare. Pacific Islanders need to be more prepared. And I think we'll, we are going to go into, we talk about, you talk about life insurance, mm-hmm. how we need to prepare and how a lot of, in the old school days, you know, PIs relied on right. fallout, you know. Right. Right. Fallout love is. So, <laughs> um, we're, and we're trying to be not, yeah, smarter than that. Mm-hmm. Let's just get prepared, get um, I think you talk about it all the time. You want right. to go into that just a little bit about um, getting our families prepared with wills and yeah, yeah. So um, I don't sell life insurance yeah. or trusts or wills, but I just share the information that I know. I just highly recommend that all families get life insurance if you don't have it. Um, if you own property, get your trust in order. Update your beneficiaries with work and with um, with your life insurances or whatever you have because a lot of times people get these in place or they get them you know in order one time and you think it's good for a lifetime but right. things change you know kids are added to the family spouse may change um, your property addresses might change so just making sure maybe yearly or every time you have a life event that you update those things because it's very important we just I mean, as as this year alone, we just don't know. You know, tomorrow's not promised for anyone. Right. We've had so many funerals, like funeral after funeral in exactly. our communities. Um, not only here in the Bay, but just it just seems like all over, down in L.A., Vegas, Samoa. Um, so, you know, when, when you hear these stories, it should be a free lesson to those who haven't lost a loved one to get your thing in order. You know, get your life insurance, get your plots if you don't have it. Um, Just everything that you can think of, you know, update it with work, especially with work when things change, because if God forbid you drop, you know, today, Mm -hmm. you want to make sure that your family's taken care of the best you can and not leave them with a headache or or bills, but you leave them taken care of. Right. Right. That's good information, Mm because so many um, I see so many GoFundMe pages for the and 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 I get it. You know, it happens if it's especially if it happens suddenly. Mm -hmm. um, But you want to prepare your loved ones. For if if that time happens and, right. you know, you, you don't want your families to, I mean, the GoFundMe pages are amazing and so many people give and it's awesome, but we just want to prepare for right. these kind of things. I know that I, I don't want my kids to have that burden, right? So we got to be prepared. Right. So thank you for that. And mm-hmm. you're also doing... Um, What are you doing? Notary. Notary. (laughs) Tell us about that. Tell us about your business. Yeah, so I've been um, licensed notary since uh, February. So that's been going good. I guess I've been with with the way the market's going right now, the interest rates are at an all-time low. So, of course, everyone's refinancing. A lot of people are still purchasing, believe it or not. Um, So it's just been crazy busy, like... (laughs) Too many jobs that I can handle. Um, I had mm-hmm. to like just kind of turn my notifications off because so many's coming, and I work full time, and I can't do that full time. Right, <laughs> right. But um, yeah, I think it's a good thing. We a notary people misunderstand what a notary is. They think we do the trust or we do the right. the wills or things like that, which we don't. We just notarize the legal documents. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So it's like a side gig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a side gig. I know that the rates are down now, yes. and everyone and their mama is refinancing as right. uh, me, mm-hmm. and so the rates are low. And it's a good time to buy a house, yep. right? So, yep. and there's the so many programs. If yep. you're a first time buyer or have never bought a house, and you think you have this, you need a huge down payment. You sometimes no. you really don't. No. It just they can find you a program that right. fits your budget, yep. right? Yep. So you don't need like. 30 50 no. million dollars down to down a house so get a hold of somebody get a hold of a real estate agent, agent right. and, and they will help you buy a home right. this is a good time to buy a home because the rates are so low right and they'll look at you know they'll help you look at your situation a lot of times like when me and my husband bought our first house we had nothing in the bank living check to check right zero our credit was not even where we needed it to be but we contacted an agent you know we she connected us to a lender we pulled our credit and then we we had a plan like hey mm-hmm. we need 
needed our scores to be like I think 30 points right. higher. So then we worked on it. We set right. it, we set goals, we went and got it, and then we was able to get into our own house with not thousands of dollars into the bank. Right. So I think people have that misconception, you know, like, oh, they gotta be rich if they live here right. or we need all this money. No, that's not the case. Yeah. I highly recommend that everyone contacts an agent and start the process. You know, right. start your Start the process by seeing where you stand and if what, what's needed and go get it. Simple as that. It, it really is as mm-hmm. simple as that because yep. the real estate agent will help you find a program. Right. And they, they stay with you for as long. Like Chris said, if you need to get your credit score 30 points up, they will help you try to get your score 30 points right. up because they want you to buy a house, mm-hmm. especially now with the rates. The rates are low. Yep. So you totally don't need $50 million. Or, you know, tw- you think you need $20,000. And some people... New home, you know, loans are zero down. Right. Like you right. can get into a house with zero down. Nothing. And they work, they actually work with your budget, right. you know. Right. If you think you're going to get like a million dollar home, they're not going to show you a million dollar home because if you can't afford it, they're right. not going to show it to you. So right. they show you what you can afford, work with your budget and work with your credit score, whatever that is. Exactly. So I really, I really want people to do that because it's. Yep. You know, I was scary too. Yep. Yeah, I was scary too when when we bought our house. So great, that's good information. Yes, so it is. It is. Please, please, please share the podcast so we can share this important information. Mm-hmm. What time is it? So, um, we talked about notary. We talked about um, um, insurance and how it's important to. Well, damn, we even did the. Um, <laughs> we even did the uh, emergency go. So what we're gonna do, right, Mena? is we're going to take a break. And before we take a break, we are going to um, we're going to play um, some ads, right, Mena? We're going to play some ads and it's really about voting early. We're ch- like we're really really pushing Pacifica people to go vote. Mm-hmm. Um, mail in your ballots if you have your ballot. Make sure you follow the instructions that are on the ballot. You need to sign the back. Um, if you're going to drive up the day of uh, voting, they have someone there that will take your envelope. Um, so just w- make sure you wear a mask when you drive up. You can also, if you haven't registered yet, you can still register on the day um, of voting November what is it third you can still vote the same day st- uh, register you can still register the same day so make sure you have um, all your information together but we really 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 want to push Pacifica people to vote so we are going to go to a break you're listening to the FICA podcast we'll be right back Here's your five-step plan to vote. Number one, check your registration status and confirm that you're eligible to vote at PacificaVote.org. Make sure your information is up to date. Number two, if you've moved during the last election, register or re-register on the site. Number three, if you can vote by mail, vote early. Be sure to mail in your ballot or hand deliver it on or before election day so it arrives on time. Number four, if you're voting in person, check the location and hours of your polling place. Know what you should bring with you. Your voter guides or notes, ID if you need it. And of course, your face mask. Also, be prepared for long lines. Think about bringing a snack, a drink, fold-up chairs, or an umbrella. Arrange transportation to your polling place and leave early to allow plenty of time. Number five, stick to your plan and vote. Brought to you by PacificaVote.org and empowering Pacific Islanders communities. I am Mountinoa e lafulo palota, o lo walu foi e maboli ile aso le palota, ele i o foi ile aso le palota, ina i o atu ele i uma le taimi, a fai e talo a awa e fai lau palota, si aki le tu lango o le nofuanga e fai ai le palota, ma taimi e matala ai, i e si le fia mea e te susu atu ma oe, o lau ta iala mo tangata palota, po oni tu si tu singa, so what if I loa be a fai e manau mea, ma i a mana tua la ufi mata, e le ingata i lea, a i a e sa uni uni muni laina u umi e te tu ai, ma ma fau fau e ave sina mea tau ma fa ma ma, ma se vai inu, se no fua fa amoe, ma se fa amalu, fa atonu so au ala e le mea e fai a i le palota, ma se su vavi ina i a lava le taimi, i e tau sisi i lau fua fuanga ma palota, 
Saunia mo oe ele pacifica vote.org ma le faa malo si au i no foango o tangata atu motu pacifica. back here listening to the FICA broadcast with me and our um, host hostess with the mostest um, this morning is Christina Mawia and um, I am Naki uh, we are going to we were going to play a song but <laughs> we just want to get this show over with because Carl's not here and he usually um, helps us along the way so <laughs> The reason why um, we have Sister here is um, this week we, um, this week Carl and I and Val were talking about um, cancer awareness and how it affected our family. Good morning, Mary. And um, we just, it was Soma and Tufa and then Val and me and, and Carl were talking about um, cancer and how it affected our family and how you need to go get a checkup and just that it's not the family that's um, going through um, cancer. So I brought sister on so she can share her story and um, tell us, um, just tell us about your experience with, with um, our brother JT and yourself. So. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much, Naki, for having me. Um, it's always emotional for me to talk about this. And um, even before JT passed on. So um, one day we were having lunch at Benihana's, and we didn't, he didn't eat all morning, so um, we got to Benihana's. He wasn't feeling good, but I didn't know it at the time. He got up, walked out. I was playing on an iPad. And then he, um, he came back and sat down. He said, um, I'm not feeling good, babe. And I'm like, eh, I'm playing my game you know, <laughs> on the iPad. <laughs> so he got up again and went outside. And then he came back inside, sat down. And we're at Benihana's, you know, with a table full of other people. Mm. My mother-in-law was with me as well. So then he sat back down this, this last time and he put his head on my shoulder. And then he rolled his head like back and forth on my shoulder but I'm still playing the game. I'm not really paying attention to him. And then he said, I'm not feeling good. So I looked at his head and he was, it was like someone poured water onto his bald head. Mm. Like he was sweating bullets. So I knew immediately at that point something was wrong. Right. I looked at the, um, the server and I said, call 911. And right when I said that, I grabbed a napkin. I was patting his head dry. Right when I said that, he just fainted and fell out. So lucky thing he was sitting down because at that time he was a big guy. Mm. So I just started crying and trying to like lift him up. There was a doctor sitting at our table. Thank God. And a nurse sitting at the table next to us, and they just took over the situation. And from that, you know, 911, the ambulance came, they took him to the doctor. And my auntie says, you know, after the, you know, they, they did some checks, they said nothing was wrong with him. I called my auntie, who's like our family doctor, because she knows <laughs> a lot of stuff. And I told her what happened, and she said, um, Christine, people just don't pass out. You know, that's a sign of something. So I scheduled his appointment to go get his physical. And I would say about eight days later, we got a call that he was, had cancer. Four days after that, he started chemo, aggressive treatment. He was diagnosed with stage two stomach cancer and he did six rounds of um, aggressive chemo, which took about seven months. And then he did surgery and then he did um, six more rounds of aggressive chemo. They told us he was cancer free and they think that they got everything. They took out 80% of his stomach where the cancer was. They think that they got everything. And then three years later, um, the cancer came back and it was aggressive. And the doctor said that there was nothing that they can do. But when the doctor, I wasn't with my husband when the doctor called, I was on my way, we were moving back to Antioch. And my husband, he, he went and sat with the doctor. He went to get some medication at the hospital. I said, babe, the doctor called. Um, stop by their office and see what they wanted. They wanted to talk to you, and they couldn't leave a message. So he was sitting in the doctor's office, so the doctor told him he had cancer. He was by himself. But he said, hold on, let me get my wife on the phone. I'm on my way to Antioch. I was on the bridge. And it was a nice day. It was sunny. And um, the, the doc, JT calls, and he goes, hold on. He puts it on speaker, and then the doctor goes, um, ma'am, your husband has cancer. And immediately, like, clouds just took over. 
it was just me in the dark. And I said, well, what do you mean he has cancer? What does that mean? So, um, you know, we knew of cancer. We, you hear it all the time. And um, you, it's all around you, you know, of course, because so many people are being diagnosed. But you don't really know the meaning of what it means until you've been affected by it. So, um, you know, my husband, I never really got online. I didn't like the camera <laughs> in my face a lot. But JT was just so open with his journey um, from start to end. And, you know, it was just hard telling our kids, telling our family. You know, then you got to be strong because you don't, you know, JT's battling cancer. But he was more, I think he was more so worried about me and our kids. Because, um, you know, of course, you, you hear cancer and you just think immediately death. Right. So, um, you know, I tried to relieve as much stress as I could from him and made sure that all his everything was taken care of with the hospital. A lot of his friends came, you know, and um, sat with him in appointments and made him laugh through the process. You know, so I think he had such, you know, he had all these big guys come in and these, <laughs> there's intimidating the doctors and the nurses <laughs> and <laughs> like, you better save our brother. Um, but I think they really enjoyed it because, you know, they were just jokesters and, you know, they, here comes these big guys, they all look intimidating, but they're, um, they're such teddy bears, you know? So they helped him through the process. They helped me through the process. I didn't want, I wanted to make sure someone was in there with him every chemo appointment, but I didn't want to cry because I cry, you know, I'm so emotional yeah. and I didn't want him seeing me cry. So I was so happy that the boys came in and sat with him at every appointment. I was at every appointment, but I stayed in the lobby and just worked or whatever, mm. popped in and out, <laughs> you know, got them food and just different things. But I'm so thankful that we had a huge support system um, come out and help us through the process because I think that's very much needed with everyone Yeah, going through a storm. And you're going through you're going through stuff too how did you release you know like because it's i know that jt is going through whatever but you're holding the house together trying to get him together and your kids who was holding you together did you have support did you um yeah i you know you we, i had a ton of support a ton of family come out but you could have a million people there but you still feel so alone right because all you really want to hear is the cancer's gone or jt's cured or we made a mistake um so when that or those words never came you know you're still you know you see the family you see the friends you see the support but you're um but you're just still looking past everyone trying to see who's going to tell you we made a mistake. He doesn't have right. cancer. You know, we, you don't have to go through chemo. We, it, we were wrong or whatever. So, you know, we, I'm, I'm so thankful that I had, I had a lot of people around us, mm -hmm. around me, trying to help me, um, around my husband. But no one could tell you the words that you want to hear. hear. You know, yeah. when the doctor says cancer, you... Um, it doesn't matter what you have, the material things. It doesn't right. matter how much money you have in the bank. Right. It doesn't matter if you have one family member there or a thousand family members there because you're just stuck in these clouds. And, you know, I was talking to my cousin the other day and I was telling her, encouraging her to go, you know, visit one of our, another family member whose husband is currently battling. I told her, you know what it feels like, you know, when we say like we're stuck in a storm it's like, imagine if you close your eyes and you imagine dark clouds all around and you're, you're in these dark clouds. Mm -hmm. Do we see the clouds? No, but it's in our head. Like it's in our minds, right? Because there's so many worries that you're feeling. There's so many, um, the weight is just so heavy. So imagine all the dark clouds around you and to see someone's face is like, this person's face is peeking through those dark clouds. Right. And it's like a, a, a light or a sunshine, like, hey, you know, somebody, somebody stopped to take time to come and pull me out of these clouds. Because I'm telling you, it just at a lot of times it felt like I couldn't even walk or I couldn't even, like I was just flat on my face. 
even though I was functioning and moving and making mm-hmm. sure things happen, bills are paid, you know, still smiling with my husband. But inside, you know, when the doctor said cancer, it was like dropping a glass onto cement and shattered, you know, shattering inside my insides. So through that process, you know, it's an emotional roller coaster. Immediately you're thrown onto this emotional roller coaster where you have good days, you have bad days. Yeah. But whatever day it is, you still have to keep moving. You right. still have to answer the call. You still have to show up to the chemo. You still have to show up to your appointment or take these medications no matter what day that you're having. So beyond the smiles, you know, people are are carrying a heavy load. So it's always good for people to come out and, you know, support but again, even if you have all that, it's just so hard because you don't want your loved one to die or you don't want to die if it's right. the person battling the cancer and you're worried about your loved ones. Right, right. Mm-hmm. That's a hot, heavy, heavy burden. It's just everyone involved in cancer. It's right. everybody's fighting, right? Right. Like JT's worried about you. You're right. worried about JT. You have also got the burden of taking care of the house, making right. sure the kids, everyone's okay. It's just not the person battling. Right. Um, and and you know I um, was diagnosed with lymphoma mm-hmm. uh, two years ago, and you know I'm so grateful for the people that came out and held my hand and and just the text messages. Right. I think we talked about on Thursday with um, SCDC with uh, Tufa and Soma how um, people is some people weren't there or you're you have close friends that um, just disappear and we talked about right. how they um, it's because they can't um, handle right. um, handle seeing you with cancer or the you know and we talked about you, we were saying yesterday right. how crazy that is and um, that we just even a, a text message to say how hey how you're doing or yep. a drive by drive by honk or whatever is is such a big deal right. such great support so i'm i'm grateful for the people that stood up and 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 came and held my hand right. out i'm also um I'm also grateful for you and JT. And um, because when I was diagnosed, I was, you know, I was crazy, didn't know um, what's going to happen or what to do. And we knew each other in passing. And I went to, to church with JT, but we were young kids yeah. then. And so, and I knew that JT and you were going through the battle of cancer. And I seen all over social media, but then when I was diagnosed with cancer, and some people, some of my closest friends, um, I didn't hear from. But and I get it, you know, they couldn't handle it, and people just handle stress or or things like this differently. And so, but you and JT, you called me like, man, I think I was diagnosed, and then we um, kept it in for a little bit. But as soon as we made it public. Um, you and JT reached out to me. You didn't know, you know what I mean? Like, we weren't as close as we are now. Like, you two reaching out to me and wanting to help. Like, I have Carl and Nicole. Really, Nicole saved my freaking life, right? She went with me to all my appointments and broke down everything that the doctor said. She helped pick the medication because there's more than just one chemo med. Right. It's not one. There's several types of chemo for different kinds of diagnosis. Right. So she she pretty much saved my life. But you and JT reached out to me because, and I talked about this on Thursday, because you guys knew what I was going through, what my family was going through. It meant so much Um to me for you to reach out sister and I always tell the story when I talk about cancer I talk about how you and JT reached out to me and you guys were going through your own cancer journey and it says a lot about you and JT and your big hearts but it meant so much to me that our lunches we went on you know I didn't want to make my kids sad. I didn't want Mo to be sad all the time. So it was such a refreshing break, you know, yeah. mentally for me to go hang out with you and just talk about anything but cancer, yeah. right? Because at the time, people were calling me 
and literally crying on the right. phone, right? Right. right? And I was like, I had to support them, and right. I'm the one going through cancer, which I get it. You know, yeah. family members can't take it. But people were calling me and crying on the phone, and I was like, oh, my God, I get yeah. Then I stopped taking phone calls, right. and I made this stupid Instagram page, which drove my family nuts. <laughs> and so, um, but the break that I got from just, you and I would go to lunch, Korean barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> And we would just sit and talk about everything and anything. But yeah. you were always, do you need anything? This yeah. is what you need to do. Yeah. Get your papers in order. This is what you, me and JT did. I mean, and sometimes we just went and just hung out. Right. So it meant a lot to right. me. And Thank I don't you. know if I've ever thanked you, you for, have thanked for doing that for me. So I appreciate you. Thank you, sis. And I think that's so important. You know, people, they think that if they don't have a lot of money to bring or they don't have these big gifts to bring, they think that it's not worth worthy of them to come and just show up. Right. But they don't realize that it's those little things. Right. That people need, you know, it's like peeking their head through those clouds. Like you're trying to stretch stay strong for your husband you're trying to stay strong for your kids so you need that outlet you need to go with someone else so you can just tear up if you feel it right you could just talk or not talk about cancer because the kids are just looking and, and the husband your husband's looking at you like they don't want you to break down because if right. you break down then they know that everything's yeah. wrong and right. you're just trying to be as strong as you can so i do encourage folks um and if if there's anyone listening that or will be listening that has not went through this or or has a family member who the, who has not been through anything like this mm-hmm. this is something you know what not to do yeah <laughs> as yes. we talked about what yesterday not to do. don't just cut them off you know even if you don't have the answers you know just show up and i was telling naki yesterday like even if you guys ate tea and crackers it would mean more right. to you that that person showed up to hold your hand through this than someone who may have sent you steak and lobster, you know? Right, right. It's just the little things that people don't realize that you really need when you're in those storms because, um, you know, you really, it's hard because you are you have so much on your mind. You're thinking about your husband, your right. everything. What's going to happen if I die? What, you know, is this set up? Is that set up? Right. But you need those little things to kind of carry you through the next day. So like exactly. I said, sometimes are good days, sometimes are bad days. And then people from the outside, you know, they'll say things like, I don't know how you do it. You're so strong. But we don't have an option. Right. You know, the cancer, the doctor didn't say, oh, would you like to have cancer today? Right. They said, JT, Moia, you got cancer. So at that point, it wasn't an option to be strong. It wasn't an option to be weak. It's either you roll over and die or you tackle it head on. Right. So, you know, come out. If your family member is going through losing a loved one or someone who's in a storm, don't just disconnect because you're afraid of seeing them like that or seeing them go through pain or, or losing them. Right. If they ever needed you, that's the time that they need you. Right. You know, when you're when when you're going through it, um, show up to an appointment. You know, I know with COVID going on right now, that's kind of hard, but you don't have to go in. You know, I told my we're going to go visit a family today, me and um, some of the Amu boys and my kids. My daughter told me last night, Mom, you're going to drive to Sassoon and you're going to drive all the way to San Jose. That's too much driving. Just mm-hmm. just let me do it. And I told her that's the least I can do. That's that's a 50 mile drive. I'm, I'm going to sacrifice that drive because this lady is battling cancer. Right. So I can't just go home and sit down and relax and be comfortable while right. she's battling cancer. We got to show up. We got to sh- let her see our smiles. Let her see our faces. Let her see that there's hope. Let her see that someone recognizes her fight, recognizes what she's going through, the fears that she has if something happens to her. What about her kids? What about her family? And to me, you know, just because I've been through it, I think, so it's more important to me. I don't care if I'm tired. I'm going to leave here and drive over there because, you know, someone somewhere has it worse than us. So we complain about these little things, but, right. but people are, um, you know, dealing with real life stuff. So 
you know, I just encourage everyone, if someone's um, battling cancer, you know, it's just a tough place to be in. And you're, it's not a choice. They didn't choose that. They were forced onto that emotional roller coaster. Right. So reach out to them, you know, even if it's a text. I remember many times, you know, I, I tried to hold in the tears from my husband and my kids. So sometimes I'll just be in the closet or in the shower and just bawling, crying, because I didn't know what we were going to do if something happened to JT. <laughs> then I'd get out the shower and open up my phone and there was a text from someone, hey, Cree, you know, enjoy your day or, or praying for you or whatever. Because like you said, the entire family deals with the cancer, not right. just the patient. Right. And we all need someone to hold our hands up to and help us through it right. while we're trying to get our loved one through it. Right. I believe that. I know. Like, I think... My husband cried once when I told him when I was diagnosed with cancer. He cried one time, and I know he didn't cry the rest of the time because he was busy trying to hold me up. But like you, I was in my showers crying because I was worried about my kids and what they thought and Mo. And so I was in my shower too crying. But that one text message or that one... Um, funny meme that people would send me or people would stop by and just real quick, hey, I'm in the neighborhood or my phone calls. It just, any little thing just right. made my day. Took my mind off of right. me for three minutes right. or two minutes. If you can do that for a person that's going through cancer or their family, that's a lot. Right. It may be 30 seconds of a text message, but it's huge. It's huge for them to take their mind off of cancer for 30 seconds or a minute. So please reach out to people who have cancer and their families because the whole family is going through it. And, and you don't know everyone's story you don't know what else is going on and and you know we just we just need to love on each other if you're mad at somebody and you find out that they're sick that that should all fall to the wayside right. that should all fall to the wayside right. i just i love that we're talking about this because people don't know People don't know what they can, what they can do and what they cannot do. Right. There's no barrier of, am I crossing the line right. if I call? Am I crossing the line if I stop by? No. Right. No, you're not. Right. You're not crossing the line. Should you call? You know, sometimes just rolling up to the house, call them, tell them that I'm outside. You know, hey, I'm outside, right. wanted to wait. Man, that's a lot right. too, right? Right, exactly. That's a lot. Make a phone call. Make right. a phone call at the very least. Right. Show up. Drop a case of water. Or, or I don't know. Right. I don't know. That's why I love that Amu does this every October. I have a fundraiser. And they collect, this year was almost... Three thousand uh, dollars. Yes, yes, just Almost, under. Yeah, right. just under three thousand dollars, and they split it. One hundred percent of the donation is right. split between seven to eight families, and it's huge. Right, it's huge. It it's going to help a mother or a, a wife not cook for a couple of days. Right, it's going to help the gas for right. for that family to get to their appointments, exactly. get to several appointments. Right, it's huge for people just just to feel like they're loved or, right. or people are thinking of them. So it's huge, huge, right. huge. Right. And sometimes it's, um, they might be the breadwinner, you know, right. or they're, they might be used to, you know, taking the kids to ballet or whatever it is. And now all of a sudden they're in the fight for their life and it's hard. They can't do the things that they used to do with their kids or maybe they just came home from chemo and they're sick. You know, that mm -hmm. next week after chemo is the hardest week. Right. And then your body starts recuperating and they're not able to get up and go cook dinner like they used to. And the kids, they don't understand. The small kids, you know, yeah. they're looking at mom like, we're hungry. Why don't you cook us food? But the right. mom is just so ill that she can't. Right. So that's why I do, you know, I say like, if a lot of, you know, your friend, you know, your family member. Yeah. You know the age of their kids. You know what's needed, and you know what's what you can do. Yeah. So instead of think that, well, this is not enough, just go do it, and you will be blessed. You will be blessed. Yeah. It doesn't matter the amount right. of whether you take crackers or right. tea or whether you take steak. It's just 
It's just being there. Right. It's just being there right. and them seeing a different face. And like I said, it's one or two minutes of them not thinking about cancer right. is, is huge. Right. It's huge. Exactly. And yesterday, me and um, Sylvia, which is with Fatasi, we went and blessed a family yesterday. And, you know, from the outside looking in, you look at this family, they have a big, beautiful home. I mean, huge home, nice, beautiful home. Mm -hmm. You know, they, I think they own their own business. They just have, you know, you, from the outside looking in, it looks like they have everything that they need, right. right? So this little monies that we're bringing to some might say, oh, that's not, you know, that's nothing. That's chump change or whatever. Yeah. But I always say it's not about what's in that envelope. It's that you showed up. And this young lady was just so much emotions took over. She didn't care what was in there because it yeah. wasn't about that. It right. was about that we showed up to say, hey, we know that roller coaster that you're on. Sylvia was there. I was there as a caregiver. We're here to just sh show some love, you know, bring a smile to your face, mm -hmm. take your mind off of what you're doing, the treatment and everything, even if it's just for a few minutes. You know, we love you. And I never met this lady before in my life. Wow. And who would know that we would connect, you know, like this, yeah. in, in this form. Um, the families that we go and bless, we don't necessarily know them. It's not, hey, let me get your money and we're going to give it to our family member. Right. That's not even the case. The the family we're going to go see afterwards today, I never met this lady before either in my life. But yeah. we're going to go. We just know that she's battling cancer. We know all the worries that and fears and, and the weight that she's carrying. That's all we know. So it doesn't matter whose family she is or right. what. She's someone's mom. She's someone's daughter yep. that is hurting. So we're going to show up. And maybe she needs what we're going to give her. Maybe she doesn't. We don't know. But that's not our place to say, hey, well, we don't have enough to give her. Right. You know, we can't match what she has. It's not about that. It's just about us showing up. Yeah. I, I love that you guys do that. And the families appreciate it so much. So yeah. I'm so grateful. Also, if you're needing some kind of um, help or just want to, like I know SCDC, I know together you and I, um, they had cafe wellness yep. when they were all open and it was every Friday. And I think because of cancer, um, I would have never went to, I, th I think, well, we went there because it was SCDC and we were supporting, right. um, and we had heard, we seen the flyer and we went to go to cafe wellness, which was every Friday at SCDC, which is a great program. And, um, that was everything for us, right? right like right. we would show up on Fridays and just trying to escape everything that's going on in our head and yep. the cancer and the deaths and the and the turmoil, everything that we're emotionally going through. We went to Cafe Wellness and it I literally lived for Cafe Wellness right. because it made me get through the next week but right. it it got me closer like i met neil like i'm gr i'm you know i'm grateful for cancer because it brought me to and it's not always the case but because it brought me to you i got to really get really close to you i got to meet neil who i knew on and off but he was the um he was, was a, a moderate facilitator. yeah facilitator for yes. cafe wellness and there were days where I would just go into Cafe Wellness and we, everybody would talk about th their problems. Right. And I would just sit and just, just listen right. to everybody's problems. I was like, mine are not that bad. Right. <laughs> or I think mine are not that bad. <laughs> but it was such a, an unload every Friday. And there's days where we go in there and Neil and I would just hold hands. Right. And I wouldn't even say anything. And so because of that, I, like Neil is my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of my one of my closest friends because I'm grateful for that relationship and for right. you because right. you guys literally saved my mental capacity. Right. You know what I mean? So. Right. And I, I agree because the Cafe Wellness, um, again, like me, like you, um, you know, I wanted to support Patsy, support yes. SCDC, support Neil because I've known him for a while yeah. with the kids and dancing and things like that. So I thought, oh, you know, let me go. That's when I lost JT. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, um, and I'd go and just sit and sit. listen. And and I'd say to myself, thank God these guys are have problems like me. <laughs> 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 you know, because you tend to go on with your, your day, go on with your week, thinking, am I the only one that has problems? Because you know what you're feeling inside. Right. But you have the smile. But then when I get to Cafe Wellness, it's like, 
wow, there's like seven of us here and they all have problems too. <laughs> I'm not alone. I'm not, yeah. you know, God's just not picking on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, you know, we could just kind of let that load down, drop it onto the floor and yeah. we all would smile and laugh wow. and cry yeah. and and it would just feel so good, you know. And, and that time, I mean, I was just, I was more shattered then than I am today because I just lost JT. So it was so needed. Um, so thank you, Patsy, and thank you, Neil, for that cafe wellness. I can't right. wait till we're allowed to get back into the building. Right. <laughs> um, and you know, we just we just need that outlet sometimes, yeah. you know, just to get together, just just talk. Yeah. Just talk. I don't think for me, I don't think a psychiatrist or anything yeah. like that would help me because I right. feel like they can't relate to what I'm. You know, they yeah. hear people's problems every day. Right. But looking at people that I knew, you know, like. Neil, like you, like Carl, and and I and they can relate to the problems that I'm having. Right. So I think it just felt like wow, I can exhale. Right. Yeah. Cafe Wellness used to do that for yeah. me. Just get me to the next Friday right. so I can come back here and unload. Right. It's it was all confidential, so everything we said there and everything that we heard right. um, stayed with us and stayed with them. I know that. Um, it was early on and JT had just right. passed right. and I was so looking forward to seeing you just because I knew it was a place that you can release and then there was days where you would just come and just sit and and then um, we'd listen to everybody's problems so I was grateful for that space I still am grateful so we need we need this pandemic to be over <laughs> so we can get us some cafe wellness come on Patsy call the school <laughs> district we need it open <laughs> We need some cafe wellness. So, um, yeah, I'm grateful right. for uh, the space. I'm grateful for the people that, um, you know, all we're asking you is just to reach out right. um, to a family that has cancer or if the family members. Um, we're trying to let you into what goes on um, right. from a patient's point of view, right. from a caretaker's point of view, that um, it's not all about... Um, it's not about you, okay? <laughs> Just show some po support. Right. A phone call, a text message. Uh, hey, how you doing? For like I said, for a minute, you right. you, you release that person's mind for a couple right. of seconds. So we're so grateful. We're so grateful for this conversation <laughs> that we needed. Definitely. Karasoma is on. His eyes are sweating again. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Soma. Hi, Soma. Hello, everybody who's tuned in. If we can ask you to share this podcast so that your family, we can share some kind of information that um, if you know someone that's dealing with cancer or someone that is a caretaker for a cancer patient or a family member, um, if you need help, reach out to us. We can get you or try to get you any kind of help emotionally, financially, I mean, anything. We can lead you to a program or we, hell, we'll talk to you, you know, <laughs> just, just reach out. That's all. Right. So, um, geez, I'm all cried out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to thank you, sister, for coming in today and, and opening up this conversation, your conversation and opening your heart to it's totally going to save somebody or show someone the way how to right. help a family member and how to maybe a family member that's going through this um, knows that you shouldn't hold it in. There's right. somewhere you can go find someone to talk to and um, or reach out to us. We will we'll try to help you and right. lead you in the way that you need to go. Definitely. Um, also, we need you to go get a checkup. Right. Go get a <laughs> Very checkup. Very important. There's uh, something that you tell people to. The H. Uh, pylori? Yes. So I do. My aunt told me about that one too. Our, our family doctor, Miss Hunkin. <laughs> um, so it's a simple virus that it, it gets into your stomach from maybe a doorknob, just maybe sharing a, a, a cigarette or a drink with someone who might have it. Um, it gets into your stomach and it's called, there's a technical term for it, but the short term is H. pylori. It's called helicopter something. Mm -hmm. So it's like the propellers on a helicopter in your stomach and it digs into your stomach oh, wow. and kind of sits dormant on some people. It could sit dormant for life on others. It can lead to cancer. Um, when we found out JT had cancer, we, he had, he was positive for H pylori. So because we, you know, no one in his immediate family had cancer. The doctor kind of thinks that the H pylori that he had led to the cancer. 
in his stomach. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know how long he had it. We just don't know. Me and my kids went and got tested at that point when he tested positive, and we were all negative. So if you have physicals, please, please, please add that to your yearly physicals, um, especially if you work with garbage, if you work with um, out in the communities, just add that to your uh, physicals. It's a simple, I believe it's a, it might be a blood test. Um, each doctor does it differently. Mm-hmm. Um, if can you, you request positive, for yes. that test? You can ask. Well, your you doctor. have to request it because okay. it's not a, a simple test. I mean, it's not one of the labs that they do regularly. Oh, okay. So when you request it, a lot of times I get, which I got to, um, well, have you been out of the country? You know, they'll ask yeah. these series of questions to see if they feel that you need it. And all my answers were no, but JT tested positive. So I wanted to get tested. So I pushed for it. Mm. Same thing with my kids. They asked those series of questions and I told them, I don't care what the doctor says, push to get the test. Right. So we all tested negative. Thank God. But I do know of people who tested positive um, and it's just a seven day antibiotic that clears it. Wow. Simple, just like that. Um, I talked to several people and I told them about this, um, add this to their labs and a few of them tested positive and they had no idea about this. Their doctor never tested for it, not even their work physicals. And they worked with, you know, different things in the city, in the community, in dirty areas or garbage. Um, Or you can be in clean areas and probably still get it because maybe someone has it. So, um, you know, it's just something that's not talked about. So we don't know about it. And it's funny because my aunt just told us that year and JT wasn't due for his physical. So I was going to add it on to his physical that year. But then we found out he had cancer and he was positive for H. pylori. So, um, again, if you forget that term, it's called H. pylori. You can always hit me up. Cell phone. I'm not hard to find. I'm on mm-hmm. social media. My phone number's all over. My email's all over. Um, just reach out to me and I'll, you know, send, send you the name. But enforce it you know you have to be the advocate with your doctors sometimes right. and sometimes they'll say well you never been out the country you know they'll they'll go through the list and if it's all no's they'll say well we don't think that you need it well then at that point you have to insist like no i need it because it's just a simple fix right but if you leave it again it can can lead to cancer but then others have it can have it for years and it doesn't lead to cancer right so but i'd rather take the seven days of pills and risk right it leading to cancer then now you have six rounds of chemo emergency i mean you know surgery like my yeah. husband and another six rounds of chemo and then now today he's not with us anymore so um you know i i, I really recommend or push that and I, and I know a lot of times men can be stubborn. They don't want to go to the doctors. Right. They don't want to go get physicals. But I tell the wives, like, it's worth an argument. It's worth a two-day argument. I don't care. As long as he goes to the doctor and gets his physical, right. gets his labs, gets his checkup, you know. Um, because if you just give in and cave in and then he doesn't get his physical, then it's, it's not always cancer. Right. It could be something minor. You know, you need to lose 20 pounds. You need to uh, get some iron pills. You know, it's it's not always right. extreme. You have cancer. Right. It could be simple fixes if we just go and see because we can't. You know, Google is not the answer. Yeah, that's <laughs> not a doctor. <laughs> and Google will have you thinking you have three days to live. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so stay off of Google and right. contact the people who went to school for this. Exactly. <laughs> And, you know, they don't know, you know, you need to get some labs done. You need to get some x-rays, mm-hmm. things like that. It's simple fix. I even highly recommend you get your eye appointments, you get your dental appointments, because even your eye appointments, a doctor can see past your eyes. And I've, I've known a couple of people where they thought everything was fine. And then all of a sudden their kid was diabetic. So when they went to go get their eyes checked, the doctor saw you need to go to the doctor ASAP because they can see it in the back of your eye, you know, wow. with the tools that they yeah. use. So this one young girl was severe, you know, her diabetic was out of control. Her diabetes was out of control, but she had no idea she even had diabetes. Wow. So that's why I recommend, you know, get your your dental checkups, your physicals, your eye exams, just everything. We have coverage. Use it. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Go go get the checkup. Because it could save your life. Definitely. Definitely. Um, You know, early detection is the key. Right. is Is the key to fighting cancer. Yep. So we need you to all go get a checkup. Yep. And um, thank you, sister. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank I you really for appreciate coming in. this opportunity. Well, there you go, guys. Go get a damn checkup. Did I miss <laughs> anything, Mena? Um, go check out uh, Fireside Queer Talk at 5 o'clock with Neil Veve and Kekoa Ke- um, at the Utopia San Francisco page. Uh, we want to... Thank you so much for tuning in. Essence of Mana has Tylenol Tuesday every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Go to the Essence of Mana page. 
Um, what else did I miss? Um, SCDC has a bunch of virtual programs. Wellness check-in on Wednesdays. They have virtual academic support for kids um, from 1 p.m. to 3.30 for and then uh, elementary and middle school and high school 3 to 5.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Go check out SCDC's page. Um, they have uh, FASO Amanatu, which is every Thursday at 11. Tons and tons of programs. Please go check out SCDC. Also, Samoan Solutions has their Fangongo Samoa play, which is now on YouTube. Go check it out. It's a great play that they usually perform every year. This year, because of the pandemic, they have it on YouTube. Please, please, please go check it out. Follow Samoan Solutions on all social media outlets. Follow the AMU page, all my usos with all updates. They've They've had a blood drive. Um, the They had a backpack um, drive. All kinds of stuff is coming up. Good things are happening. Uh, support your Pasifika entrepreneurs. Go shop Pasifika before you go to Nike and wherever else you need to go. Um, thank you so much for tuning in again. Thank you, sister, for coming in and, and for having this open, raw conversation about cancer. I love you so much. You love know you. that. And then uh, we will be back next week. Come FICO with us. Failau fufuang e balota, siaki le tu lango o lau resitala ma fa amauti noa e ma faiwan e balota ile pacificavote.org. Fa amauti noa o lo o le leo fa matalanga uma e o mai ile taimine. A faiwa sui le mea e te alala hai taru mai le balotanga o atua nai. Resitala, pe toi resitala i lunga o le wepesite. A ma faiwana e balota ile meli, balota wafe. I am Mauti Noa e lafu lau pālota, pa ulo walu fōi e ma moli i le aso le pālota, pe le i o fōi i le aso le pālota, i na i a oo atu e le i uma le taimi. A whae e talau a awa e whae lau pālota, si aki le tū langa o le nofuanga e whae ai le pālota, ma taimi e ma tala ai. I a e si le whia mea e te susu atu ma oe, o lau ta i ala mo tangata pālota, pa oni tu si tu singa, sa o ata whae i loa be a whae e ma nau mea, Ma i a mana tua lau ufi mata, e le inga tai lea, a i a e sa uni uni moni laina u umi e te tu ai. Ma maa fau fau e awe sina mea tau maa fa maa maa, ma se vai inu, se no fua fa amoe, ma se fa amalu. Fa atonu so au ala e i le mea e fai ai le pālota, ma se su wawi ina i a lawe le taimi. I a e tau sisi i lau fua fuanga ma pālota. Sa o nia mō oe e le pacificavote.org ma le whaa malo si au i no fōango o tangata atu motu Pacifica. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Q. Joe Sav. From Island Block Radio. Y'all are tuned in to the FICA Podcast. Every Sunday at 10 to 12 noon. Stop playing. Come on.